Oh my god. <laughs> Firmly grasp it in to the ground. Okay. <laughs> it so survived. Oh. <laughs> 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 it survived. Get it. <laughs> oh my god. Created a rocket. <laughs> David was trying to get. What was that? Oh, I don't know. What just happened? <laughs> Have you been taking speed and you haven't been talking? <laughs> yeah, I've taken some new speed. All you have to do is rub it on your skin and it works. <laughs> you flew 300 feet. Apparently, I left a little bit on the on the table. Hello everybody, you wonderful culinary connoisseurs. Welcome back to Cooking Time with Breen. I'm your host, Wallace Breen, and I would like to introduce you to the Rainbow Cafe. Um, it's the same catch uh, shut up we had beforehand the last couple of episodes, but we, we, we did a little bit of remodeling and uh, I, I like the colors. So today we are going to break conventional cooking standards and we're going to do fried chicken a special way so uh in the past we've been using a lot of uh, uh head crabs as our uh, form of uh protein but today we're, we're going to go out to the very far savannah and we're going to get ourselves the most rare of all meat types in order to make a fried chicken we're gonna go hunting so today, to join me on my safari adventure and getting this rare choice of meat, I have G-Man with us today. G-Man is unfortunately a mute person, but he's one of the best snipers in the business. So uh, we're here to welcome him onto the show. You ready to go hunting, G-Man? Yeah, alright. So we're going to need a special tool to catch... The, the, the wild chicken so, that rare animal we're going to get I'm gonna need a industrial sized pokeball now now everybody might be asking why why a pokeball we're not playing Pokemon here well this special ball right here lets us do just that let's go So, the, a few things about the type of uh, animal we're going to go hunting for today. Unlike the head crabs, which are small and fast, we're approaching the last remnants of the ant lions. Now, the trick is, is that you cannot make any sudden movements, or the ant lions are prone to doppelgang you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this long enough that they're probably used to it now, but that's a, that's okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look, set our Pokeball down on the ground. We're going to check some of these uh, sleeping ant lions here, the ones that aren't moving. This one isn't good enough, so we'll go to the next one. This one's not good enough yet. It's, it's just turned into a, a teenage antlion. It's probably all angsty and stuff, so we don't want that in, in our food. So we're gonna come over here. Oh, oh. Oh, that one's, yeah, that's, that, that one's perished. It's not even sleeping anymore. Oh, wait a moment. Ah, look at this beauty. Isn't he gorgeous? Oh, look at those! See those mature wings right there on the ant lions. That make you fry them up, deep fry them, and they're really crunchy. All right, so we're gonna pack this thing into the pokey ball, just like that. 
and we've got our Pokeball. Of in inside of it is our uh, antlion, so we're gonna take it back. Oh yeah, yeah, get down, get down. You don't want to attract the the antlions that are awake. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We've unpacked our Pokeball full of the wonderful antlion meat. Look at this, this beauty. He's 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 mature. He's he's huge. The wings are fully developed. Um, and those are the best part, the wings, let me tell you. Mmm. Nothing crunchier. Um, we're gonna have to probably, first of all, we're gonna have to, uh, di we're gonna have to get rid of the, uh, the legs here. So we're gonna take our crowbar, um, hit it, or whatever cutting utensil you have, hit it right at the joint. When it flares up like that and it just hangs, that means you're doing the job. We do that one a couple of times. Now you. Ah, uh, yeah. You see, the problem with ant lions is that th their weight is so heavy, it just breaks the, the table. That's okay. We can do groundwork here. So you want to take your ant lion and you want to hammer out the joints, make sure they're all loose, so you can eventually cut them off when you fry it. Once you're done with that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your high-level industrial meat processor, just like this. And you're gonna grind up the ant lion. Just rub your, your meat processor all over the ant lion's body. Get all uh, get all the uh, impurity impurities out. And then, now that we're done with that, we don't need it anymore. We've got our ant lion, and we're going to prepare to cook it. This is where things get very dangerous because we're working with flammables. I've got a a, a a uh, uh, gas canister here, which we're going to use to uh, pressure cook this thing. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take the gas canister, slide it right underneath the, uh, the 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 body of the ant lion. Now, this kind of meal, because we're using ant lions and ant lions tend to get big, uh, this would be good for c cookouts. So now we've got to. Uh, trigger the gas canister and start cooking this thing. So I'm going to take a step back here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You can just hear the, the snap, crackle, and pop down there. Now we're going to make sure it really gets cut down. And, and, and now we've got sectioned off all the meat. Uh, we're going to wrap it up in a nice uh, yummy breading so no one has to worry uh, about getting cancer or anything like that and uh, there see you can see the the lovely evened breading around the the open slices of uh, the the antlion and so there you go that's 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 the way to properly fry up ant lion. It's not fried chicken, but it tastes like fried chicken. You've been frying it wrong your entire life, and that's how you do it. Thank you, everybody. Good night.